another football player turned matinee idol, Fred the Hammer Williamson. He's the superstar, super stud of such movie classics as Black Caesar, Hell in Harlem, The Legend of Nigger Charlie, and his latest, in which he not only stars, but also wrote the screenplay, Three the Hard Way. He's a sampling. Lee, I've got some information, man, about what this bull is all about. Yeah, but, uh, husband. Well, she's fine, man, as far as we understand. That's good. Something they still got her. Hey, but the cat did tell us something about, uh, Washington, L.A., Detroit. Something about some stuff in somewhere, man, but uh, we had to charm him to death to get it out of him. Permanently. Yeah, that's not a hell of a lot to go on, man. That's kind of light on details, you know. Yeah, but we do have some facts. Because wherever house was at, that guy was at the same place. Because they're telling the same story. Yeah, this guy Feather was bankrolling this organization with the doctor, uh... Portrero. Yeah, that's right. That's a heavy number those dudes are up to, man. Well, you want to just stand around here and wait and see if they can pull it up? It looks like it uh, all comes out even, don't it? Yeah, that's right, brother. Three the hard way. Three cities and three of us. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our first guest, the Hammer, Fred Williamson. How'd you get that nickname? The Hammer? Yeah. Well, actually, I got it from uh, decapitating people of <laughs> different color jerseys. <laughs> In your career. You were with the Pittsburgh Steelers first, and then you went into the AFL, didn't you? Yeah, I was uh, with Pittsburgh, and then uh, I was living in Oakland at the time, and uh, they had more money, you know, the green stuff. And yeah, I heard they, that. They enticed me to... to uh, jump leagues and I did. Yeah. How'd you get into the movies from Pro Bowl? Well, actually I was an architect when I left uh, Pro Bowl. I had my own firm in Canada and uh, I didn't dig working nine to five, you know, kind of like your job. I didn't, you know, I wanted to get into something loose and free. And one night I was watching television and I was watching the Julia show and I said, what they need is a, a cat that's tall, dark and handsome to play her boyfriend, right? And so I packed up my things and I went to California and I found a producer and I says, I'm just what you need to save the Julia show. And he agreed and uh, I did the show for a year as her boyfriend. The, the reviews of your movies have been kind of mixed. You generally get pretty good notices, but the movies are criticized. No, I don't generally get, I always get good reviews. <laughs> <laughs> my movies get You bad. and Howard are going to get along just no, well. No, I, what, <laughs> Yeah, but you see, I'm factual, man. I just tell it like it is, right? I tell it. I always get good reviews on my movies. I never get bad reviews. The movie gets horrible reviews, right? But I'm not responsible for that because I don't write the script. Right? Well, you wrote the script for Three the Hard Way, though. No, I didn't write that script. I wrote my lines for Three the Hard ah, Way. Ah, I see. But How about the, the critique that the movies are kind of black exploitation films? You know, they exploit the plight of black people and women mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff, you know, by giving oversimplified answers to really complicated problems. Well, I don't really understand that simplification either. You know, what is black exploitation? Who's being, who's being exploited? Not me. I mean, well, let, let, wait, let me give wait, you an let example. Well, let me finish. Oh, okay. <laughs> let me get my point out. Okay, right. Okay. Uh, who's being exploited? I'm black. You know, I'm not being exploited because I'm happy with the paychecks. So I'm not being exploited. Right. The public is not being exploited because nobody is twisting anybody's arm to go see the movies. They go see the movies because they like them, because they are being entertained, because they like to see me do my thing. Right. Therefore, they're not being exploited. In the, in the plot of the last one, uh, a group of white businessmen conspiring to put... Uh, some virus into the water supply of the world so that black people would get a disease similar to sickle cell anemia and therefore uh, be wiped out. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. right. Uh, that kind of is a, a, a plot that, whether intentionally or not, will, uh, if anything, kind of heighten polarization, will kind of make people think, yeah, that could really happen. And, uh, well, do you think that it could not possibly happen? Well, I think it's very unlikely. That's not I mean, what I asked you. I asked you, do you think that it could not possibly happen? Well, it's as realistic as putting LSD in the water supply and making us all hippie dope freaks. Yeah, uh, but I've been to some, I've been to some, I've been to some parties, man, where like, in in the West Coast, there was a, 
an incident like that. They had a, a party at a big, at a big uh, apartment house, and somebody put some LSD in the punch, right? A couple of people got freaked out. They had to go to the hospital. They did get wiped out on LSD, and, and you know, they're taking treatment for this LSD that was put in the punch. So, like, it's all practical, man. I mean, I'm not saying that I agree with the script, you know, but I'm, I'm dealing with the practicality of it, that it is possible, it is not totally impossible that a thing like that could happen. Let's meet your, your partners uh, and talk some more with you about your movie career and, and this new venture when Good Night America continues right after this. <laughs>